and now we can breathe. Hello everybody, and this is gonna be your review of the Iran versus Syria match in the round of 16 of the Asian Cup. Unlike my other previous reviews that I've done for Iran's matches, this is gonna be a fairly unedited version as my day's been pretty busy. I didn't expect to do an over three hour live watch along for this match, so I just don't really have the time to edit this and I want this out ASAP. But in regards to the match, it was a pretty nerve wracking performance. If you're an Iranian national team fan, they didn't really play that well throughout the match. They started off very slow. They didn't really create many opportunities. Then came a penalty somewhat later in the first half from a clumsy challenge by one of the Syrian defenders where he honestly didn't need to make it, but it was a stonewall penalty. Mehdi Tadami steps up, he converts. It's all looking quite decent for Iran, but honestly, I was thinking this might be like a Hong Kong 2.0 situation where Iran's just going to get the, the one goal, smash and grab, and leave the match. But as the second half rolled around, I think Iran started to play a little bit better. They kind of came out of their shell a little bit more. They did create a significant amount of chances, but sadly, no one could finish. We started being a little cute in the final third. Sardar Asmoon, my goodness, this guy's missed chance after chance after chance throughout this tournament, and it's absolutely killing me. And as Iran have been doing throughout this tournament, there was another lapse in judgment by our defense where the ball just kind of goes everybody's head it goes to one of the Syrian attackers it falls to him Baron Von comes gung-ho out absolutely destroys that man's ankle and then after review it was given as a penalty and honestly it, it was a penalty. Siri didn't have any chances up to that point in that match they didn't really create anything I don't think they looked that great offensively I'm not saying Iran was awful defensively they kind of locked down any opportunities for Syria so that's why it was incredibly annoying that we conceded the penalty then Syria converted and they were kind of back in the game but Iran kind of played with a little bit more urgency once that goal did go in so it did look a little bit better but again, missed chance after missed chance from the team. And then the moment that kind of turned the tides entirely was Mehdi Tadami got two yellow cards within a span of 10 minutes. One for a dive that I didn't feel warranted a yellow card because it was a foul, but at the same time, it wasn't a penalty. It was really soft. And I saw plenty of the Syrian attackers do the same thing for a lot more softer tackles in the Iranian national team box. So I did think that was a little bit suspect, but his second yellow was a stonewall second yellow which led to his red card but part of me was thinking why was he all the way back on defense can the defense just not cover itself it's just like a whole like calamities for Iran because they started playing really trash after that. The match kind of just evened out. Syria kind of were feeling themselves. Iran were kind of feeling on the back foot because of the red card. It kind of seemed like weirdly enough because Iran got the yellow card. It seemed like they were playing now on like an even playing field even though Iran was playing down a man if you guys get what I mean. But nonetheless it was kind of a nervy end to the match with 10 minutes of added time. I kind of hoped Iran could get a late goal so it wouldn't go to ET because honestly I was super nervous with how the the team was performing after the red card but it goes to extra time and it's pretty it's a pretty dead extra time period where both nations were just wanting it to go to penalties because at that point it's anyone's to win then it goes to the penalty shootout Baron Vaughn makes a clutch save in the shootout to save one of the penalties which was enough for Iran because they converted all their penalties and I must say all the penalties that Iran had were absolutely perfect bottom corner side netting top corner it was absolutely amazing from them in the shootout Baramont made the much needed save that he had to make and honestly he kind of just owed the team that because they wouldn't have been in that situation if it wasn't for his clumsy penalty in regulation time and after all of those heart attack moments Iran advances by the finest of margins against Syria which I didn't felt needed to be the case but you know what they did what they had to do they won the match they could have easily honestly folded in this match but they luckily did it and they advanced to the quarterfinals do I have a man in the match for this game probably not there was not really any stand out performances by any of the Iranian national team players. I will say Golizadeh played really well when he came on. So what I'm hoping for is we'll see Golizadeh start in the next match against Japan, especially with Tarami being suspended. And I know it's not a good look. I'll talk a little bit more about the Japan game at the end of this video, but definitely Golizadeh was probably our best player, most kind of like offensive minded, offensive spark in this match. He had one of the better chances in this game. It was a really good save by the Syrian goalkeeper. So I think I might just give it to him but yeah I don't think there was really any standout performers in this game some players that didn't play well in this game I think honestly the entirety of this team just didn't play well and I think that comes down to Amir Kalenoui and his squad selections because at the end of the day this team is just a in 
injury ridden team where we don't have much squad depth. Our center back options are very thin. Our midfield options are very thin. And that comes down to Kalinoi and his poor squad selections. Khalilzadeh at the end of that game for the last like 10 minutes in extra time was limping on one leg and could barely play in that match. If Syria could have capitalized on that opportunity, they most definitely could have scored. And it annoys me because you call up a guy like Saman Fala, who is a center back. He's a pretty decent center back. Yes, he is young, doesn't have many to any minutes for the senior national team, but you don't trust him to maybe come on just for five minutes for a guy that's basically just playing on one leg. Just those kind of things are just very questionable for me. And throughout this tournament, he has done so many questionable things from his lineups to his substitutions, from his tactics. And regardless of the result against Japan, I still don't rate Kalenui. And unless he wins the Asia Cup, he's not winning me over at all from his coaching in this tournament. Syria is an opponent that Iran should be able to beat, but nonetheless, we should be happy and proud of the performance that the players gave that they were able to dig in and fight to the very end and win this match in a penalty shootout. So I am very much happy about that. But now I'm going to give you guys that little two for one combo in this video where I'm going to do a mini preview going into the match against Japan. And by the way, as of now, it is set that I will be doing a watch along for that match at 3.30 in the morning, my time for it. So if you guys have been watching the watch alongs, make sure to be there. It's going to be hecka early for me, but I'm going to do it because I want to watch Iran beat Japan. But when it comes to this match, Iran have a little bit of a dilemma with who they're going to start in this match because Mehdi Tanami will be suspended which is a big blow, but I don't actually think it's the end of the world for this team. I think this will give players like Golizade an opportunity to show their offensive capabilities, and I think this could be an opportunity for us to set up more structurally, where we play more as a unit and not so heavily reliant on the Asmoon Tanami front two combo. I personally would just start Asmoon up top alone, if not that, start Ansarifar because Mohalu and Asadi should definitely not be starting in this game. Golizade and I would say Jahanbash should be the wingers. Midfield of either Eze Tolahi, Saman Kodus, and maybe throw in like an extra DM if you're only going to play one striker up top, be it Essan Haj Safi or Omid Ebrahimi, even though it's not one of my favorite picks, but he's the only other DM that we have. The defensive line, I mean, I don't know which center backs are available. And honestly, I don't really rate any of our center backs outside of Majid Hosseini. Ideally, I would would want Majid Hosseini to start in this game if he is available, but I think our defensive line is going to completely screw us over in this game, but we'll see what happens in that regard. The main thing Iran has to focus on when it comes to the match against Japan is crossing the ball, because I believe throughout the entirety of the group stages, all the goals that Japan conceded were from crosses. A good match to look at in particular was the game against Iraq in the group stage where Iraq absolutely dominated them in the air, and Iran is the tallest team at this tournament, so so this could be a good opportunity. On top of that, Zion Suzuki has been pretty awful throughout this tournament. So if Iran can make some good chances, take those opportunities because we've been absolutely wasteful throughout this tournament. And I'm talking about you, Asmoon. There is an opportunity for Iran to beat Japan. They would just have to have a pretty close to perfect match, which we haven't seen throughout the tournament, but it is possible. Do I think it will happen? I'm, I'm not totally convinced, but I hope I'm wrong. But if Iran can win this match against Japan, I think they would have a great opportunity to possibly win their first Asian Cup in decades. This is their most challenging opponent. The whole wide world's favorite to win this tournament. Asia's current top team in Iran could prove the whole world wrong, beat this national team, and go on to win the Asia Cup. But boys and girls, my opinion really matters so much. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure to be there for that watch along. As I said, it's going to be super early for me, but I'm dedicated to do these watch alongs because I enjoy watching the Iranian national national team with all of you so make sure to be there smash the like button on today's video subscribe if you're not subscribed already and i hope you'll have a lovely day